Before we start this video, a quick announcement. I have made my first variety video on my second channel. So if you would like to see some tomfoolery in the future, head on over and check it out. All right, so we all know Yareli, right? The frame that's memed on constantly. People have this idea that she is trash. However, I am here to tell you, totally not as a Yareli main, that your rally is actually a lot stronger than you think and in this video i'm going to spend a few moments of your life convincing you that she is good like seriously this frame was changed and tweaked so many times that she is actually a lot better with the addition of her new augment called loyal marilina your rally is in a much better place and it has made her 10 times better in my opinion i will go over why i think this is the case in this video now let's not waste any time shall we let's talk about bubble frame firstly how to farm you're ready uh yeah about that one um wave rider quest i do not need to say more i am terribly sorry for your sanity money is the way Yareli's passive is quite a nice one she gains 200 percent critical chance for her secondary weapons when she has been moving for at least 1.5 seconds just from her passive alone, she is a very good secondary weapon frame. She buffs pretty much all secondaries except for the Latum. The passive is poop for the Latum, unfortunately. Yareli's first ability is called Sea Snares. Now, <laughs> let me explain Sea Snares to you, my good Tenno. Personally, I love this ability. Why? Sea Snares are these little bubbles that you throw out which will lift enemies in the air, making them immobile. You can cast up to 15 globules, but what makes Sea Snares so good is the damage vulnerability you get from them. Sea Snares apply damage vulnerability, which will literally multiply your damage drastically, pretty much making your rally a very good weapons platform. Whether you are using a primary, secondary, or melee, it doesn't matter, you just do so much more damage with your rally. This damage vulnerability scales with strength and you can easily get over 300%. Like I said, this ability alone is amazing for crowd control and the huge damage boost you get from it. Another cool thing is this ability has quite a fast casting animation, allowing you to shield gate with your ready a lot easier. Shield gating with your ready is very important as she is not the tankiest frame out there. Her second ability is called Merilina. Now, I can go on a rant on this ability alone, but I will spare you the pain. In short, this is your ready's best and worst ability at the same time. Hop onto the uh, boat and drive your little K-Drive around. Sounds pretty cool, right? Yeah, well, if only it didn't have the worst movement mechanics. I mean, it's okay if you are in an open tile set, but if you go into any small tile set with corridors, well, you're going to be back at your therapist. That's the downside of this ability. Terrible movement mechanics and a few bugs as well that come with it. It makes your rally quite buggy. Not only that, it limits you to only using a secondary with your rally. But when it comes to the positives, it gives you 90% damage reduction and you will be immune to knockdown or stagger while riding Merilina. When you summon Merilina, you will be invulnerable for 4 seconds. Within these 4 seconds, all the incoming damage will be converted and added to Merilina's health. Think of it as like Rhino's Iron Skin or Neja's Warding Halo, except it's a boat. If Merilina's health runs out or you simply deactivate Merilina, you will then dismount it and be invulnerable for 1.5 seconds, basically allowing you to quickly recast Merilina. Now let's do some basic maths here real quick. 4 seconds when you hop on, 1.5 seconds when you hop off. That's 5.5 seconds of invulnerability. Now, if we add Rolling Guard into the mix, that's an extra three seconds. So if you have enough casting speed and you're clever and with your management on how you cast Merilina, it's going to be pretty hard for you to die with this frame. Ironic, because I say she's not the tankiest. Here's the thing, if you slip up, she dead dead. That's the downside. However, we have a new augment called Loyal Garden. However, we have a new augment called Loyal Merilina. Loyal Merilina is an absolute game changer when it comes to your rally. Instead of you riding Merilina, the boat now follows you and it will periodically cast Sea Snare. The cooldown is reduced by increasing your ability efficiency so you can go as low as 0.5 seconds at 175% efficiency. You still receive the 90% damage reduction and the status immunity bonuses as if you were still riding Merilina. However, you do lose the 1.5 seconds of invulnerability that you would have gotten if Merilina either died or you recasted it. This augment completely changes your rally and makes her a lot better in my opinion. Just in terms of quality of life, you're no longer flapping around like a fish trying to maneuver Merilina. You can now warframe like a warframe. This is the augment I'm now permanently using because anyone who genuinely enjoys running the K-Drive, I don't know. 
There is another augment for you psychopaths, I used to run this, which is called Marilina's Guardian. Marilina's Guardian is actually pretty decent, I won't lie, if you can get past maneuvering Marilina, as well as the bugs that come with it, it's actually not a bad option. When enemies are killed, when affected by sea snares, it will then heal Marilina for 20% of their health. When you start to heal Marilina, you will also gain 200% reload speed and fire rate on your secondary weapons for 20 seconds. This will obviously scale with ability duration. This is a particularly strong augment if you're focusing on just secondaries. And because of this, you can see now why Yareli is a secondary focused frame. All right, let's move on to her third ability, which is Aqua Blades. I mean, it's not the best ability, but it's not horrible, and I'll explain why. The slash damage scaling from this ability is actually really good and can kill steel path enemies with ease. Cast three razor blades that circle your rally and apply slash. Every time this ability hits an enemy, it's a guaranteed slash proc. But Aqua Blades staggers enemies, pushing them away, meaning you can't hit them as much, but if you cast Sea Snares on them, it will hold them in place, allowing you to just shred through them. You can further increase Aqua Blades' damage by subsuming Raw and or applying Viral with a Primer. This is also Yoreli's Helmet ability. Again, it's okay, but it's not the greatest. This one can be your subsumed slot if you don't like this ability, but it comes down to personal preference. Although it does stagger enemies, so it's also a decent close quarter cryo control ability, you can also cast this ability while on Merilina. Aqua Blades has an augment called Surging Blades. When you activate Aqua Blades while in use or during its cooldown, you will hurl a single blade. Prone Blades gain 10% damage when any Aqua Blade hits an enemy and it costs no energy to throw. Another cool thing is these blades have infinite punch through and hit multiple enemies in one line, but it's a very singular focused kind of ability. However, this Augman has a hidden mechanic. If you use Yareli's signature weapon, the bubble gun, i.e. the compressor, cast Aqua Blades, shoot at the floor with the bubbles, then quickly cast Surging Blades by recasting Aqua Blades, the blade will then create a bubble. Any enemy that walks into this bubble will get ripped to shreds, but the damage from these bubbles scales with the Augment. So the more damage you have stacked up, the more damage the bubbles will do. You can then cast the Riptide to pull all the enemies in, basically turning it into a meat grinder. Now, you can further this damage even more by casting Sea Snares on enemies applying damage vulnerability, which just boosts our damage over time from the slash box drastically. And if for some reason on this planet it does not kill everything, you can apply Viral to further increase the slash procs, and you can add Raw from someone else if you want to. You see what I mean, it's pretty broken. However, there are a few downsides to this playstyle. Firstly, you will need to have something like Riptide or another CC ability to pull all the enemies in. Riptide is actually the best because it creates a bubble and it will basically deal damage to all the enemies affected inside the Riptide's bubble. And it also limits you to having a very AFK type playstyle. So this is for those of you who want to use something different for survival endurance runs. It's not something for you to be on the run and move around. It's very sit in the corner and this is my corner type of thing. Her fourth ability is called Riptide. I subsumed this one. Now Riptide also is not horrible, but it's not the best. Drag enemies into a big bubble that flings them around in a vortex. This bubble will shrink over time or you can manually detonate it by pressing the ability again. The cyclone will burst and slash outwards. It will do 50% more damage for each enemy still alive within Riptide when it explodes. Increasing your ability strength will increase its damage. If you pair Riptide with Sea Snares and the damage vulnerability, it will increase the damage further. Personally, I don't like this ability for me. The only thing it's got going for it is the crowd control, which is why I've subsumed it. This is just my personal opinion. You guys may see it differently, but it depends what you like. Before we go further, could you hit that like button? It really helps me out with the algorithm. Thank you, my beautiful ducat. All right, that's her abilities explained. Now let's actually explain how to play her. There are two ways that you could play Yareli. The first one is with Merilina. Here you will build around using something like Merilina's Guardian, which will boost your secondary's damage considerably. This playstyle is for those of you who don't mind using Merilina and enjoy the K-Drive playstyle and also like running secondaries. Or you can just simply subsume something else and not even use the augment. It's entirely up to you. But it is important to know that when you subsume an ability and use Merilina, you can't cast that subsumed ability. You will need to hop off, cast it, then hop back on. This is a very tedious playstyle. It is the one big downside of using Merilina normally. The second way you can play Yareli is by simply using Loyal Guardian. Again, it's Loyal Merilina. Why do I keep saying Guardian? 
allowing you to gain the benefits that Merulina would normally give you, except you are no longer tied to only secondaries. You don't need to hop on and off the whole time when you have a subsumed ability. You can just Warframe. Personally, this augment has changed your ready entirely. I keep saying that because it really has. All her issues and bugs have pretty much been fixed from this augment. I wouldn't suggest subsuming Merulina as the 90% damage reduction is actually very good when you are using your rally for star chart or even base steel path. Whether you are running a helmet setup or just her base setup, you're pretty much going to be casting her first ability C Snare always. This is so that you do more damage from all sources and for the crowd control, keeping your rally alive more. Use Merulina no matter the playstyle you choose. Depending on if you have subsumed either Aqua Blades or Riptide, just use either ability in rotation to make use of them. So cast Aqua Blades if you subsumed Riptide so that you can get some nice slash and a little bit of stagger. And then you can just cast Riptide if you subsumed Aqua Blades for the extra CC. It depends on what you want. She's relatively simple to play. You don't need a PhD to understand her. The only thing to watch out for is micromanaging Merulina in terms of the invulnerability and just making sure to recast it in time when Merulina dies so that you don't die and you can kind of leverage the invulnerability. It's very important to kind of keep an eye on that. One of the biggest things is with loyal Merulina, you're no longer hopping on and off, so you don't really notice when Merulina dies. So keep an eye on the bottom right of your screen and watch Merulina's health. Merulina is incredibly important for keeping your rally alive. Now this leads me on to how to build her. In this video, I'm going to mainly showcase the one build that I run with her. This is a build I find to be the most comfortable and just complements everything together. I have subsumed Nourish onto your Rally's fourth ability. This will help us with her energy sustain as you're going to be spamming a lot with your Rally. We then focus on strength and duration. You can invest into some range, but I don't feel like it's worth it as it only affects Sea Snares and Riptide. We do make use of brief respites here. This is because shield gating is very important for keeping your Rally alive when you start doing higher level content. If you aren't a fan of shield gating, I do understand, then by all means switch the build around to a more health tanking setup and make use of adaptation. This is entirely up to you. But I find you're ready to be a really good shield gating frame because of how fast you can cast sea snares. Your ready is actually quite versatile and you can actually get away with not as much stats because she is so strong as is. That felt weird to say, but it's the truth. If you are someone who doesn't have the primed mods, you can follow the same build, just the normal variants. This is how the build looks here. I do run Arcane Ages here for that extra survivability. It's very handy for keeping yourself alive longer if you feel like you are dying a lot. Arcane Energize is flexible. You can run Molt Efficiency instead if you want more duration or Molt Augmented for more strength. This is entirely up to you. If you feel like you are struggling with the negative efficiency, drop Blind Rage, run Transient Fortitude instead, which will slightly lower your strength and duration, but that way you can have more energy sustain. Make sure to run Equilibrium as this mod is just simply godly. This is my go-to build for pretty much all content Warframe has to offer you. It's very, very good. But if you are a beginner or someone who simply doesn't have a Holman setup or anything like that, then we can move on to a simple build like this. I will show the full build here, but focus on your main mods like Flow, Streamline, Continuity, Intentify, and so on. Your aura can be flexible to what you have available. Eventually, when you start investing some more former into your ready and a catalyst, complete the build as shown on the screen. You may not have all the arcane, so just use whatever you have available. This setup is super balanced and can take on most content in Warframe. If you do feel like you are dying a lot, then you can get your hands on Brief Respite, form the aura slot, and run that instead. This will help you with your survivability, and if you want, you can run an unranked Arcane Aegis, because remember, maxing this Arcane isn't going to make much of a difference, as you just need to have shields to shield gate, and as long as it's regening, you will shield gate. Maxing this Arcane will only affect the regen rate, not the chance of it proccing. So this is very important to know, and it's a good budget option if you can just get one unranked Arcane Aegis. Regarding the augment, remember you can decide if you want Merulina to be normal and flap around like a fish, or use the new augment making Merulina follow you. Alternatively, you can just run no augment if you want to run something else. Again, she is flexible. So that's the two main builds out of the way. A Nourish Subsume and just a no helmet here ready setter for you to try her out before you decide to invest more former into her. Now, remember I showcased the hidden mechanic with the Surging Blades augment? Well, here is the setup we run for that specific playstyle. 
Remember though, this setup is a very boring AFK type playstyle. Well, you're really, it's not super active. For this build to work, you will have to find a corner, use the compressor. There is the build I run for the compressor. I do particularly love the bubble gun for absolute memeage. Shoot the bubbles on the floor, quickly cast surging blades on it, and then cast riptide on an enemy to create a meat grinder. Just one more thing to take note, remember the way Surging Blades works is when you cast Aqua Blaze and you begin to hit enemies, it will then stack up the damage on the top right. As you stack up this damage, remember to recast Aqua Blades into the Compressor Bubble to do more damage to them. Also cast Sea Snares for damage vulnerability to literally shred through everything the game has to offer you. Although watch out for overguard enemies, that's a big issue. Like I said, very AFK but good for those moments when you kind of want to just chill. We have one more setup for those of you who like using armor stripping setups for higher level content you can use something like this. Remember with Loyal Merolina you can now cast Terrify at will instead of having to hop off. And that concludes her builds. When it comes to Archon shards with your Rally, casting speed shards are very important at least 50% that makes a big difference in your Rally and how fast you cast Sea Snares. And then ability duration is very, very important for that extra duration on Nourish or whatever abilities you are running. Okay, so I just dumped all this info on you. So what are the final thoughts? Here is the thing. Yoredi has been labeled as a meme frame for the longest time. Because of this, people don't really play Yoredi anymore and don't realize that she has been reworked so many times that she's actually really, really good. She's a damage powerhouse of a frame with decent crowd control. The new augment has completely changed her because the biggest issue was Merilina. Merilina was painful to maneuver, it was buggy as shit, there was just so many issues with this ability. Yes, it sucks we need an augment for her to be like this, but at least we can change her by adding this augment. I love Sea Snares, it's an underrated ability that people just look past. She's actually quite versatile. If this video hasn't changed your opinion on your rally, at least give her a try and then let me know in the comments below if you think she is still shit. A huge thank you to all of our channel members, your support means so much. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and if you guys like Citrine, I have just made a video on her so head on over there and check that video out. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.